Welcome to our channel. Hope today is a great day for you. Subscribe and ring so our this channel is about to the receive time that I dated a sociopath. So I met this guy that we'll call Aaron at my best friend's birthday party. He was super attractive, but honestly, I was flirting with his friend the whole night, which looking back on it, I think is what got his attention. By the end of the night, he went out of his way to talk to me, and I noticed just how absolutely charming he was, and I was shocked that he was single. So he asked for my number, and I of course gave it to him. And for our first date, we ended up going hiking. PSA for your safety, I do not recommend this for a first date. While every Everything seemed fine originally, this is where the conversation got weird. He talked to me about how he was attracted to me because I was going into the mental health field. He feels like no one can figure him out. He struggled with relationships for years because he continually puts on masks for people, but they can only last for so long before they come off and a breakup occurs and the other person sees his true self. But he says that this is why he's so good at sales. He's able to be whoever he wants to be for each person. He customizes it. Never once did he talk about his own emotions regarding situations, just his protection of his own reputation. As if he sees people as a way to get something or protect something. Soon I was contacted by a family member. Stay tuned for part two. Hey guys, so welcome to part two of me dating a sociopath. So his cousin reached out to say that this is what he does to girls. He stays in someone's life for a little bit, absolutely destroys it, and then pieces out. The person that he dated before me was a mom of two kids. He walked into her life, pretended to be a father figure and then once he couldn't hold that mask for too long he left he only lasted like three months of course me being absolutely stupid i decided to continue dating this person part of it was because i was attracted to them and another part was just pure fascination he always told me what i wanted to hear looking back on it i know that i was just another person that he customized whatever he had to say to but not only did he win me over he went out of his way to impress every single person in my life so that he would for sure have an end and then on my birthday of last year he called me to tell me he was too busy to date me and i was beyond upset with myself for seeing so many red flags and still continuing and that's when one of his best guy friends reached out to me saying that he had been dating my best friend's little sister the entire time talking to her and going on dates with her having her over right after me completely two timing I cut him off and haven't heard from him in a year. Until last week. Stay tuned and follow me on Instagram. I guess here's part three of me dating a sociopath with receipts. So I went out downtown with my boyfriend Jeremy and a few of our friends. Went to a few bars and a couple clubs and had a great time. Came home, was getting ready for bed. And then I got a text on my Snapchat. Y'all know the feeling of seeing someone's name pop up on your phone that you haven't seen as a notification for over a year. It's weird. Essentially, he was apologizing about a year ago, saying that he feels like he hasn't wronged someone as much as he's wronged me, but that he saw me tonight and essentially followed me to each place that we went and talked to my friends about me and how beautiful I looked even though he is still with my friend's little sister. We'll call her Ava. But do y'all see how creepy that is? Like, I never saw him. Like, I don't know what's wrong with my monitor, but then he called me. I'm pretty sure he thought that I wasn't gonna be around my boyfriend anymore. That's why he waited. But I put him on speaker so my boyfriend could listen to. And he just went on and on. And I knew I was gonna have to let his girlfriend know. So I called my friend and let her know what happened. She said she was gonna tell her sister tonight. And that night she said Ava and her wanted to do a group FaceTime. This story basically turns into catch a cheater. Stay tuned and follow me on Instagram for more content. Okay, here's part four to dating a sociopath. So I got on the phone with my best friend and Ava and Ava said, and I quote, that Aaron let her know about the phone call and the text messages, but said it was because my boyfriend and I were following him around the entire night. What? She already knew that it was sus and she had been having a gut intuitive feeling that the relationship wasn't okay for the past few weeks. So me showing her the message kind of just confirmed her feelings and she was gonna confront him on it and give him a chance to explain himself. Well, this man decides to contact me again. I immediately text Ava and send her the messages and he asked to call me a second time. This is when we decide to record the phone call. If you guys want, I can put in a few of the clips just so you can see how this man finesses and charms. But during this phone call, he essentially said that the text messages between me and him made him come to the conclusion that his relationship with Ava was not at its best and he was going to meet with her to break up with her, but that they were obviously still going to be friends. And he was only concerned about his reputation and his standing with their family. This makes me wonder what he's even saying to other girls since he's saying this with someone that's so close to them. Stay tuned for the update and add me on Instagram. Story time. My boyfriend tried to kill me so he could have my life insurance money. So I decided to go on Tinder to look for some potential matches, and lo and behold, a guy named Jared was there. He was adorable, he was charming, and we had multiple cell phone calls before deciding to meet. We met at Red Lobster, and it was like fireworks. He was so romantic and looked like a six-foot-something cowboy. He took me to a wildlife bird refuge after dinner, and I instantly fell for him. We dated for months, and everything was mostly good. However, he was just very pressuring for things. And I didn't want to take things too fast. I was 21 and he was 31. Eventually, this just gave me some bad vibes, so I decided to cut off the relationship. But a few months later, he called me saying that he couldn't forget me. He had been married before and his wife had passed away, so I felt very sympathetic towards him. He had a really nice job, making over 150 k a year, and he said that all he wanted to do was take care of me and my child. So I moved in and things were good again. I would wake up in the morning, he would make me coffee, 
and I would help him with his kids. But I noticed that my weight was starting to go down. And that's when I realized he was putting something in my coffee. Follow me on Insta and stay tuned for part two. Part two to my boyfriend trying to kill me to get my life insurance money. I was not feeling very well and my parents were extremely worried about me, especially once they found out I only weighed 88 pounds. I knew I had to have been really, really ill. So my parents drove down five hours to rescue me and I was immediately hospitalized. That's when I was able to put together the full story on what was going on. He started putting all the money that he was making into my bank account, but he didn't let me have access to it. He would take out loans in my name, making it look like I was making money. And my life insurance policy added to half a million dollars. During this time in the hospital, I was going through severe withdrawals from whatever he was putting into my coffee. But the second I stopped drinking it, I started to gain weight back. I was thinking that maybe he had done this to his previous wife. However, when I looked her up, I found out that she was still alive. They were just divorced. Later, I was able to find out that they even moved back in with each other. Make sure you don't ever get too blinded by love to realize that you're being taken advantage of. Follow me on Instagram, and if you have a story, DM me. Story time, how I catfished the girl that my brother-in-law was cheating with. So my brother-in-law always had a bit of a cheating reputation, and he definitely gave me the worst vibe. He had even cheated on my sister before, but they forgave each other and worked things out. Whatever. But I knew that something was up once rumors started to fly again, and so did my sister. And there was one particular girl on his phone that was very sus. So my sister got the number and we decided to set her up. We didn't really know how much she knew or if she was aware that he was married. So we just pretended to be him and asked her to come him. We decided to walk on upstairs. So she walked up and literally called this man by his first name and he denied knowing her. Like we were in shock, like we caught you, like here she is. How are you even gonna deny that you know her when she's calling you by your first name? But she just kept laughing and he just kept denying it. It was extremely uncomfortable and super weird. She literally knew everything about him and even walked over and tried to be like all cutesy with him. And still, he denied. So we just ended up making her leave and I literally fought this man. My sister was upset and shocked, but I was way more furious than she was. It's one thing for people to hurt you, but not the people that you love. Luckily, she is done and no longer with him. Today, we need to know our self-worth and set high standards for the people that we're dating. Follow the girl that sent me the story and add me on Instagram and DM me if you have a story of your own. Story time, how I found out my substitute teacher was actually my biological father. So of course I went to school for our usual class and our teacher wasn't there. So we had a substitute that day and I could have sworn that I recognized him but I couldn't tell from where. There would be times during the lecture where I would look up and he would just be looking at me. I felt like there was a weird connection between the two of us but I didn't exactly know where to place it. Since it was the last hour of the day, he asked me to stay after class. I immediately got the creep and said no, I had to catch my bus. And I hadn't seen him for weeks after that. Some days later, I noticed a for sale sign on my neighbor's yard. So during their open house, I decided to peek out my window and see who was visiting. And there he was, my substitute teacher. I got the creeps and I just ran upstairs to focus on something else. Once the house sold and the moving trucks came in, I saw that it was my substitute teacher that actually bought it. I was terrified but still felt this weird connection. That's when my mom offered for us to bring cookies over to his house. She said it was the neighborly thing to do, so that's what we did. So we went to go knock on his door. Stay tuned for part two and add me on Instagram. Okay, so part two to finding out my substitute teacher was actually my biological father. So the whole interaction between my mom and him was so odd. He was clearly high, so my mom just set the cookies down on his front door and we just left. Many nights after that, I just felt like someone was always watching me. I constantly got the creeps and I would just notice like little stuff going missing, but I never thought it was that big of a deal. But a few days later, this man invited us over for a dinner and my mom made me go. And it was just as strange. Like I could tell that my mom was so uncomfortable. I asked to be excused to go to the bathroom. And once he showed me where it was, I did a little bit of snooping. In a room close to his bathroom, there was pictures of us. Like my mom and I and baby pictures of me and also recent pictures that we were completely unaware of. I ran downstairs and grabbed my mom and told her that we had to leave. She agreed and once I told her about the pictures, we filed a police report. The police told me he was my biological father and he was in the process of searching for me for three years. And to this day, my mom has still not talked to me about the situation. Sometimes you have to trust your gut. Add me on Instagram and if you have a story you'd like to share, DM me.